Hello once again everybody at Vintage Iron Range Dirt Track Racing. Today I am here with Billy Matsdorf from Grand Rapids. Bill, it's nice to see you today. Nice to see you too, Mark. Uh, thanks for taking the time out and stopping in and doing this interview. Uh, Bill, how did you get interested in racing? Actually, my uncle started racing in 1953 and then my dad started in 1956. And I was kind of the gopher boy then. I had to help with the cars and whatever they were doing, cleaning mud or changing tires and whatnot. So that got you the bug to start racing. Got me the bug to start myself, yeah. So you could, you didn't want to just be a wrench turner. You wanted to hang on to a steering wheel. Yes, I did. So. Okay. And so then what year did you actually start racing? I started racing in 1962. In 1963, I had a few few races under my belt. 1964, I started my own car and raced from then on. So full time in 64. Full time, huh? full time. Okay. What was the first car you raced? First car I raced was a 1937 Ford. I drove it home from Aiken, Minnesota, and I didn't even have a driver's license at that time. <laughs> but it didn't seem like the highway patrols really bothered you. So the guy gave it to me down there, and we just put old GMC on, on the hood was it. Times were a little different back then. Uh, that, I would assume that would have been a flathead Ford yep. V8 then? flathead Ford. It would be nice to have that car back. Uh, what class did you race in then? Your we actually, cars? everybody just called them stock cars back then. I mean, uh, the flathead Fords raced with the flathead Plymouths and stuff like that. And there was no such thing as a V8 class or anything like that. So it was just like a hobby class yep. or something they call it? Okay. And then eventually it broke out into many different yeah, classes. Yeah, different sanctioning ones. And what, what all classes did you race throughout your career? Well, I started out with that hobby stock, or with the what they called then as uh, stock cars. And then we went to the six-cylinder class. Then we went to the V8 class. And then we went to the A mods. And then in 2006, I wanted to get my feet wet again after I'd quit a million times like Brett Favre has that... Uh, <laughs> I went back to a Midwest mod. Okay. And that V8 class you raced, that then changed into the Wazora Super Stocks? Yes, it did. Okay. And uh, that come about in 1990 when I went into this Wazora Super Stocks. Okay. Who are some of the best racers you've raced against throughout your career from like back when you started up until your modern, uh, well, the modern days? Well, over the years I raced against a lot of good guys. A um, few of the guys have passed away on us and whatnot. Uh, Lenny Pastelli, Dan Claggio, Lauren Tardy, uh, Kelly Esty is another fine gentleman. And um, Dan Ebert would be another one. So, I mean, there was always lots of fun racing against these guys. They, okay. And, and they made you better because they were good competition. Yep, they made me, from what I was getting up to be or trying to be anyway, to be a better wheel man. Okay. No. You started your career back in the days of homemade cars. Yes, we did. Where you had to take a stock vehicle, smash a glass out, build a roll cage. Yep. And you ended your career in the days of the professionally built cars that you'd get from chassis builders. Uh, do you remember like what all different types of cars you raced? Well, I kind of started out with a 37 Ford and then I had a 55 Ford and I had a 57 Ford, a 60 Ford, and then we started getting into the Chevrolets because they were being much faster than we were. Um, had 67 Camaros, stuff like that, 74 Camaros. We got into Camaro styles just because they were a lot better cars. So. Mm -hmm. And then the professionally built era, what was your first, do you remember what, what was your first factory chassis? Uh, first factory chassis that I had was from Lou Fager's, was a super stock. And um, I had one of them in a leaf spring car, and I had another one as a coil spring car. So. And then you had various modifieds then, right? Yes. I um, picked up a Fager's modified. Actually, I bought that from Brian Strand when I first started in A-Mods. And then I got one of the um, J. McDonald cars. And uh, I, that's about all I had was two of the mods. I couldn't really Did afford much at that time because the motors mm -hmm. were starting to get mm -hmm. expensive. So. But you had Millennium mods too, didn't you? Actually, yeah. I had Millennium Midwest mods. Oh, okay. Yep. And then you had a TRC Midwest mod? I had a TRC Midwest mod, a couple of them. And um, that's Are, what we kind of ended up with was a TRC because I wrecked my Millennium down at Ogilvy. Okay. Um, you've had various numbers throughout your career. 
You started as HC2. Yep. How, how, where did that number come from? HC2 actually come from my dad when he quit racing because he was out of Hill City and his biggest sponsor was from Hill City at that time. So I took the number from him and um, when we changed out of the Flathead Ford class or their so-called stock car class, then I went to the straight number two and uh and that was kind of your number for the most of yep, your career there. for many years yep. i had number two until i started running uh, the super stock class in 1990 when Wasota started and i was 40 years old so i picked number 40 then okay and then you ended up at one point with one of your mods number two cents what, well what's that story the whole two cents deal was that i figured up all the bills and everything when we got done I guess we wound up with two cents left was about it at the end of the numbers. I said it was quite a quite an expense that we didn't really expect that much to get into it. But when you build a car over the winter time, you just kind of pick away at it. And that's what it wound up as. <laughs> okay. Uh, I read back in one of the newspaper clippings that you were the Coke hot dog race winner back some time ago in Grand Rapids. Yes, I was. That was quite a race. You know what? Nowadays, it would be so dangerous to get in and out of the cars with the seats they got and everything else. But uh -huh. anyway. Well, what was that for, for some people watching this that might not know what the Coke hot dog race Okay. Is? They would have Coke and hot dogs lined up on the fence and you had to come by, get out of your car, eat a Coke and a hot dog, run around the car, go around and make another lap. Sometimes they might have two of them. Sometimes they might have four. Depending on how hungry you were that night is how many hot dogs you could get. <laughs> so, so you had to drink all the pop, eat, eat all the, all the hot dogs, or, or eat all the hot dogs, and then the first one back around the track again after that was the, was the winner. Was the winner, yep. The, I, I could see where that would be an insurance nightmare yeah. for today's racing. Very uh, did that ever make you contemplate doing a competitive eating career like out at Nathan's Hot Dogs in New York eating? No, eating not dogs. really. It was just something I had done at one time that I got pretty good at and I don't know why, but everybody else gave me a bad time about Okay, so it, you so. decided to just stick with the racing. We'll just stick with the racing and leave the hot dogs go. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this concludes part one of our interview with Grand Rapids' Billy Matzdorf. Please stay tuned for part two.